This short tutorial is about the confidence interval. Now we will discuss step by step what a confidence interval is and what it is used for. Let's get started. What is the confidence interval? In statistics, parameters of the population are often estimated based on a sample. Therefore, on the one hand you have the population, but since in most cases you cannot survey the entire population or you don't have data about the entire population, you draw a sample. Now you want to use this sample to estimate a parameter of the population. Parameters that can be estimated are, for example, the mean or the variance. Let's look at an example. You want to know the height of all professional basketball players in the US. In order to figure this out, you draw a sample. The mean of the sample is most likely different from the one of the population. Let's assume that we draw not just one, but several samples, which of course you don't actually do in practice. So then each sample is likely to show a different mean. So in the first sample we have one mean, in the second sample we most likely have another mean and again in another sample we have another mean. Of course it's also possible that purely by chance two or more samples have means which are exactly the same, but this is very unlikely. Now it is very useful to know a range in which the true value will lie with a certain probability. So here we have the means of our sample, but actually we want to know where the mean of the population is. Therefore we want to find out in which range the true mean value is most likely to be found. This range is called the confidence interval. Thus the confidence interval gives us a range in which the true mean is likely to be found with a certain probability. But what is a high probability? For the calculation of the confidence interval, the probability with which a parameter should lie in the interval must of course be defined beforehand. As a probability, the confidence level of 95% or 99% is used very often. If a confidence interval of 95% is given, one can be 95% sure that the true parameter value is located within this interval. Let's take a look at the confidence interval for the mean value of normally distributed data. If your data are normally distributed, the formula for the confidence interval for the mean results with x bar plus or minus z times s divided by the root of n. Here x bar is the mean, z is the z value for the respective confidence interval, n is the sample size and s is the standard deviation. Plus minus results from the fact that we have once the upper limit with plus and once the lower limit with minus. How can we visualize this? If we look at the curve of the normal distribution, we can draw the lower limit and the upper limit. The lower bound is given by x dash minus z times s divided by the root of n, where we take the minus for the lower bound. And we have the upper limit with x dash plus z times s divided by the root of n, where we use here for the upper limit the plus. The range between the lower and the upper limits then is the confidence interval. If a confidence level of 95% is selected, 95% of all values lie within this range. So the next question is, where do we get the set value? The set value for the respective confidence interval can be read from a table in which the set values for the respective confidence level are plotted. For the confidence level of 95%, for example, the set value is 1.96. This results in the equation x dashed plus minus 1.96 times the standard deviation divided by the root of n. The confidence interval can of course be calculated for many statistical parameters, not only for the mean value. 
To sum up, the confidence interval indicates in which range the parameter lies with a certain probability. For example, a probability of 95%. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can find many more tutorials on datadep.net, so just have a look. Just Google datadep or use the link in the video description below. Bye.